Howdy folks, Jamboreeki here. Many people know the name of Don Bluth, the director behind such classic animated movies as All Dogs Go to Heaven, The Secret of Nim, An American Tale, and The Land Before Time. But before he became a household name through these films, he produced a couple of short films, and I'm going to be reviewing those shorts for this video. Starting with The Small One. The Small One is actually one of the only Disney productions directed by Don Bluth himself. It follows a little boy and his old donkey called Small One, who share a beautiful friendship together. But sadly, the boy's dad cannot afford to keep Small One any longer, and the boy must take on the hard task of selling his best friend to a new home. The heart of this short is the friendship between the boy and his donkey. While the world sees Small One as useless and old, the boy looks at his donkey as the sweetest, kindest and strongest creature he's ever met. That is so cute. You can really feel a lovely and affectionate bond between the two. It honestly didn't take long for me to fall in love with their adorable friendship and become worried about seeing these two being divided. They just look so happy and content together, sharing a true and genuine adoration for each other. To be honest, Small One really reminded me of a dog I owned growing up called Henry, who was really old as well. So this really helped me to easily connect with the film and sympathize with its characters. Watching this poor boy drag his beloved pet around a shady city, uncertain whether he'll find a buyer and if said customer will be a caring person, is really unnerving and heartbreaking. I was constantly conflicted, desperately wanting the boy to stay with Small One somehow, but also knowing that realistically that couldn't happen. So I was stuck worrying about Small One's potential new home and whether his owner would be just as caring as the boy. You don't get this gripped and invested in a cartoon unless the characters mean something to the audience, and I really did feel strong emotions about these two. I was really hurt when folks mocked or abused Small One, I was scared when a threatening buyer approached the boy, and I was consistently moved by the loyalty between this boy and his donkey. While this is a Disney production, Don Bluth's fingerprints are all over this film, from the concept of vulnerable characters in a dangerous environment, to the short's courage to not shy away from showing the darkness of the world. But at the same time, Disney's touch is still there, especially when you notice how the boy looks eerily similar to Mowgli from Jungle Book. There's also some Disney-esque musical numbers, penned by Bluth himself and his assistant director Richard Ridge, who would later go on to direct The Swan Princess. These songs can be beautifully sad or comically upbeat. Whatever the tone, they are really great additions to the short that help reflect the story's themes of friendship, companionship and financial transaction. Thankfully, the short ends on a high note. It's a profound conclusion as we see the biblical character of Joseph agreeing to buy Small One to help his wife carry Christ to Bethlehem. As soon as I saw Joseph, I felt a sense of relief, because his face is full of such friendly and well-meaning kindness. I could tell that this was the right family for Small One to move to, but it was still very hard to see the boy saying goodbye to the donkey he loved. The Small One is a very touching and lovely Disney cartoon that deserves way more attention. It's a beautiful short crafted by one of the masters of children's animation. So those are my thoughts on the small one. Let's now move on to his second short film, Banjo the Woodpal Cat. Inspired by an incident that happened during Don Bluth's childhood days at a farm, Banjo the Woodpal Cat is about a naughty kitten called Banjo who gets fed up of being told off by his dad all the time for doing bad things. So he decides to run away to the city and find some fun. Unfortunately, the city has a dark, scary side that makes Banjo realize how lucky off he was at the farm. But a kind and jolly stray cat called Crazy Legs, voiced by Scatman Crothers, finds Banjo and agrees to help him find a way home. 
This short was made when Don and his Disney animator buddies were tired of where Walt Disney Animation Studios were going spiritually and creatively. You see, this was an era when the company liked to cut costs and time for their major feature releases, so Don Bluth, Gary Goldman and John Pomeroy got together to produce their own cartoon in Don's Garage. Despite its low budget and cheap studio location, Banjo the Wood Pal Cat looks remarkably high standard. Everything is very fluidly drawn and there really is a sense of quality control behind the production. Sure, it's rough in places, but as the film goes along, you can see these homemade filmmakers wonderfully improving their techniques and skills. They try new things, embrace ambitious movements, and push their abilities. Keep in mind, this short was made over a year, which gave Don and his crew a chance to treat Banjo as a learning curve project. There really is a charm to seeing Disney animators making their own movie outside of the studio, and the handcrafted touch glows from every frame. Although, the story being told isn't very remarkable. While there is fun to be had from Banjo's antics in the city, the jazzy musical numbers, conflicts with scary alleyway animals, as well as the friendship between Banjo and Crazy Legs, the short story wasn't exactly bringing anything new to the table at the time. Heck, Disney themselves had already made a movie about cats trying to get home to their family with help from a charismatic street feline in the Aristocats nine years before. However, it's Don Bluth's clever direction and his crew's passion for the project that gives Banjo the Woodpile Cat its appeal. There's a huge intellectual competence behind the character animation, special effects and background design that's really impressive for a homemade cartoon. This loving craftsmanship does carry through into the storytelling too, making the simple narrative gain a lot of heart and personality. So despite how run-of-the-mill and thin the film's premise is, Don and his crew managed to bring a lot of spark to the film using their talent. Could the story have been better? Sure, I think what the film really needed was some more educational value for the kids watching it. When the short opens up, the narrator's main point is that Banjo is a very naughty kitten. He had a neck for a ruckus or row, although he was tiny and small. Often poor mama and papa would scold, but that didn't stop him at all. And while his adventure in the city makes him better appreciate his family's love, the film doesn't take the time to teach Banjo how to be a good cat. Neither does it show how Banjo has changed once he comes home. The short just abruptly ends once he gets back. Even Don himself pointed this out in the audio commentary. Oh look, by the fireplace there's all the family. Not at all worried. <laughs> Where the heck have you been? <laughs> yeah, end credits, quick. <laughs> Let's just cut. It's all over. <laughs> Crazy Legs, who demonstrates himself to be a very responsible and good-hearted cat, could have given Banjo some valuable life lessons before helping him get home. Then, once home, Banjo could have shown his parents how he's matured thanks to Crazy Legs' lessons. This would have given the short a thematic lesson about being a decent person and a satisfying conclusion by the end. Despite my gripes with the story, I do think that there's an endearing charm to it, mainly thanks to the relationship between Banjo and Crazy Legs. It's really nice to see a character eagerly wanting to help Banjo from the kindness of his heart, despite his own problems of poverty. I ain't never really prayed before. I mean, it ain't like I haven't tried to find that truck. <sighs> if you could sort of move it over in my direction, I know I could catch it. <sighs> I gotta get that little guy home. Under the little screen time they share together, we can see a growing friendship between the two cats. It's a companionship that we do end up caring about, and this makes their goodbye very bittersweet. Even though I think it has room for improvement, I do suggest checking out this short film, especially if you're a Don Blue fan, as it's packed with the director's usual traits and drawn with his distinct art style. It also serves as a great bite-sized gateway into Blue's filmography, as it'll give newbies a very clear idea about what to expect from his features. 
I hope you've enjoyed my review of Don Bluth's short films. If you did, then feel free to like, subscribe, and share. Also consider making a monthly pledge to my Patreon in return for awesome rewards. Thank you. Cheerio, folks.